In this video, we're going to learn how to use the built-in any function in Python. So the any function is going to return true if any of the items in the iterable object it's passed as an argument are true. So for example, if we call the any function and we pass it a list with false, false, and true as items, a list is an iterable object and this list does contain an item which is true. So we expect the any function to return true in this case, and we can see that if we output the return value using print. So we'll have print here, and if we save the program and try it out, we do get true here. Now, if the list contained false, false, and false, now there is no item in the list which is true. So now, if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back false. Now the any function will also work with items that evaluate to true or false. So for example, the string ABC evaluates the true. So right now, if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back true again. But the empty string evaluates to false. So here, if we had the empty string, now we have false and false and what evaluates the false in the list. And if we save the program and try it out, now we get false again. If the iterable is empty, such as an empty list, the any function is going to return false in this case. So right now with this empty list, if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back false. The any function will work with iterables of different types. So for example, sets and dictionaries. So we could pass in a set with the numbers zero and one, where one is going to evaluate to true and zero is going to evaluate to false. So if we save the program and try this out, we'll get back true. If we just had zero, which evaluates the false, then if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back false. If we pass the any function a dictionary, it's actually going to check if any of the keys are true. So for example, if we have zero colon and then true and one colon and then true, in this dictionary, the key zero is going to evaluate to false and the key one is going to evaluate to true. So right now, if we save the program and try it out, we'll get back true. But if we only had the key zero and not this key one, and then we save the program and try it out, now we'll get back false. Now one good use case of the built-in any function comes from combining it with a list comprehension. So for example, we could use a list comprehension to produce a list of true or false items by checking for some property. Then we could use the any function to check if any of the items in that list are true. This could allow us to do with one line of code what would normally take a multi-line loop. So for example, let's say we have a list of strings. We'll have strings is equal to, and we'll have the strings apple and against, and we'll have application. And let's say that we want to check if any of the strings in this list begin with A, G, A. We could use the starts with method to check for this. So we could have some string dot starts with, with A, G, A as the argument here. And this is going to return true if this string starts with A, G, A. We'll use a list comprehension and apply this method to every string in this list. We'll have here s dot starts with aga for s in strings. And if we output the list produced by this list comprehension, we'll find we get false, true, and false because this string here does begin with aga and the other two don't. So if we save the program and try it out, we do get false, true, and false. So now we can use the any function to check if any of these strings begin with AGA. We could have here, if any returns true, when pass this list, then we'll output here, a string does begin with AGA. Otherwise, we'll have else, and we'll output no string begins with AGA. So now, if we save the program, and try it out, we'll get a string does begin with AGA. If we had here, instead of against, apply, 
now no string begins with AGA. So if we save the program now and try it out, we'll get no string begins with AGA. And the advantage of this approach is we've done with one line of code here, what would normally take multiple lines of code and a loop structure like a for loop. So this is how we can use the built-in any function in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.